Hi, this is Kathy with Barefoot Mountain School of Herbs. And in this video, we're going to go over some more of the uh, early spring uh, herbs that are coming up. We're going to do a little bit of foraging practice. This is part two. There is a part one, uh, but we're still uh, in the very early spring herbs. Um, in some of these pictures, we're going to go over chickweed and cleavers, violet, ground ivy, horsetail, crane's bill, colt's foot, yarrow, queen anne's lace, bloodroot, and even a baby teasel. So just stick with us till the end and we'll, we'll uh, get some practice then. The information presented in this video is for educational purposes only. We cannot be responsible for your safety or well-being stemming from any advice in this video. Please do your own research and use your own judgment when foraging for herbs. Please be safe and may God bless you. Okay, the first thing that we're going to look at is um, what you might find in some of the yards. If you go outside any of the yards or fields, um, obviously you're going to see a whole lot of chickweed. Um, it is in bloom right now. Um, we'll see a lot of violet, dandelions. Um, you still have your purple dead nettle coming up. Um, there's also a lot of um, ground ivy around. So um, right now, uh, if you don't get your chickweed, it's probably getting ready to go away pretty soon. So um, this is what it's going to look like close up. As you can see, it has the little tiny flowers and they're, um, they're split. Um, it has, actually has four petals, but it looks like eight where they're, they're split. Um, they're very tiny. Here's a picture of my thumbnail next to it. So you can see how very tiny they are. Um, one of the identifying features um, of chickweed, let me get you a picture of it. I thought I had it up here, is the stem. Um, there's a line of hairs along one side of the stem. Now, chickweed is fuzzy here and there. It's It's got little hairs here and there, as you can see. But on one side of the stem, there will be a single line of hairs. And that is an identifying feature of chickweed. Okay. Okay, so now uh, we're going to look a bit, little bit closer at uh, violet versus ground ivy. Some people call this creeping Charlie. Um, but as you can see, the violet flowers, even though they're shaped a little bit the same, they're a whole lot bigger than the uh, ground ivy. And the leaves of a violet are um, heart-shaped, where the ground ivy is scalloped. So that's one of the, um, the things that you can tell them apart. Um, in this picture, let's see, we have a whole lot of um, clover coming up. And we have, of course, our, our violet. And you can see how the, the leaves will kind of fold and curl. Um, then we have our ground ivy or our creeping charlie. Uh, it looks like a little bit of wild strawberry in here. But that's about what we have in this picture. Um, let me do a close-up. This is a close-up of the ground ivy. As you can see, the, um, the leaves are very uh, scalloped around the edges, whereas um, the violet has the, the heart-shaped leaves. Even though, you know, they're a little bit wavy, but um, obviously you can see the difference in them. And, and like I said, the, um, the violet is just a whole lot bigger. The flower is a lot bigger than the um, ground ivy. Okay, so now we're going to go more to our woodlands. And uh, this is actually a wet area around the woodlands. Um, and the first thing that we notice in the middle, this is a baby teasel. I don't know if uh, how familiar, familiar you all are with teasel. Um, but it is great for people with Lyme's disease or any kind of deep-seated infection. It's really good to go in and just pull that out so that the antibiotic herbs can get to it. Uh, this is a, uh, it looks like a first year. It's a biennial. And uh, the, the babies, the first year, they, you can identify them by these spines along the leaves. 
Um, the second year will send up a stalk with great big burrs and purple flowers. But what we're looking for um, are the roots of the first year teasel. But we are going to wait till like November to harvest. This is like the last thing we harvest um, almost because uh, it needs to frost on the leaves before we harvest it. But we know where it is. And that's the thing. You just mark your herbs so that you know where to come back and get them. Um, this is some um, colt's foot flowers that are still left, even though they're they're kind of fading. Um, over here, you can see colt's foot leaves are starting to come out. So these are just the baby colt's foot leaves. Um, let's see. I wanted to show you all a picture of the colt. Okay, here's a picture that I got of the colt's foot flowers with some leaves. And, and um, what happens with colt's foot is the flowers come out first and they come out in late winter and very early spring. And then they fade completely away and then the leaves come up. So, um, you know, these flowers obviously have faded, but for them to be right next to each other, I just wanted to show you what they look like. And then this next picture, we are looking again at some uh, colt's foot leaves that are coming out. Now, these will get a lot larger, uh, but right now you'll notice some coming out. Over here's one. But also interesting in this picture, we have the little bitty baby horsetail coming up. That is very, it's a very, very important herb. It's one of our key herbs that we go over in our apprenticeship Um if you're not in the apprenticeship and would like to be, I'll leave a link in the um, in the description. But um, let me get a picture of the horsetail up for you. This is what it will grow into. And um, here's a stem, a picture of the stem. It is a natural source of silica. It's um, antihypertensive. It is... Um, immunomodulating for people with um, autoimmune diseases. It's great for kidneys. It's just such a good herb. Um, so we're just really interested in seeing that. Um, let me see if I can get in a little closer and you can see, you can see it's, uh, it's stem. And in this next picture um, where you see horsetail, you will usually see, see the little horsetail here? you will usually see these baby cranes bill coming up. They come up uh, at the same time. We usually harvest them even on the same day or, or one, one week after the other. But uh, you can see the little baby cranes bill. And this is a picture of a uh, cranes bill that is ready to harvest. Um, and we harvest the roots and, and it is in the spring, but we go ahead and harvest the roots. Actually, you don't want to harvest the ones that have bloomed. You want to harvest the ones that are just about ready to bloom uh, for the strongest constituents. So uh, we'll go over that when um, it, gets, it gets closer to time. Um, I'm thinking it'll probably be around, um, probably around the 1st of May that these will be out here in, in uh, Central Appalachia. And uh, Crane's Bill, of course, is very important for um, stomach and digestive issues. Um, it is, it, it's just, I, I use it for anything having to do with stomach, gallbladder. Um, it's also good for, uh, like, too heavy of um, periods or uh, urinary tract infections and that sort of thing. It's, it's just a great herb. Okay, in this picture, we have some cleavers. That are coming up. Go in and look at those a little bit. You see they have the little whorls around the stem. If you touch um, the cleavers, they're rough and they will like stick to your clothing like Velcro or that sort of, not, I mean not as tight as Velcro, but they will stick to you. Um, that's one of the identifying features of cleavers. Um, they're wonderful for um, like uh, autoimmune type like psoriasis and that sort of thing. Um, itchy skin uh, internally for um, blood cleansing, um, kidneys, liver, that sort of thing. Um, these are not ready to harvest yet. You want to harvest them when, when they're in bloom. They will bloom with little white flowers coming out of the whorls. Little tiny. Those are teeny tiny, even tinier than uh, the chickweed. 
Um, it looks like that they're blooming here, but they're not. If you'll look very close, you'll see these are little chickweed mixed in with the cleavers. Um, we have a dandelion leaf here. Down here, this is a, a buttercup leaf. Um, we have some ground ivy down in here. Some more um, chickweed. So, but um, the cleavers, we want to keep a really close eye on um, this time of year because um, they're getting ready to be ready to be, be harvested. We want to harvest them um, right when they start blooming uh, to, for the strongest harvest. And this picture, I'm always so excited because I just think they're so beautiful. Um, this is bloodroot in bloom. Of course, we don't harvest bloodroot until the fall. And you only harvest it if there's a whole lot because um, it's one of those that are uh, getting endangered. They've been, it's been over harvested. This is garlic chives down here. That is a good wild edible. But um, I just really love the bloodroot. Um, and there was a whole lot here. This is a picture. This is just along a creek bank where you can see the bloodroot. Um, you can see the um, irregular edges and the flower. This is a good way of locating a lot of bloodroot if you want to um, harvest some in the fall. And this is a close-up of a uh, bloodroot leaf uh, in the fall. Uh, actually, in the early, at late summer, um, they'll turn a little bit yellow before you're ready to harvest them. And if you're curious as to why they call it blood root, this is why. This, this is how it looks. Uh, and this is, you know, when as you process it, it turns even redder. And then as I was uh, driving home a little bit farther up the hill, um, I noticed that we already have yarrow coming up. So um, if you look, they're very tiny right now, but you have the little feathery leaves of a yarrow plant. Um, let me show you how they look full grown. There they are. Um, this is a, a patch of yarrow that are ready to harvest. You want the flowers and the leaves. But right now, of course, they're just tiny. Um, probably by mid-May we'll be able to harvest those. Um, and this down here is a Queen Anne's Lace. Now, um, of course, Queen Anne's Lace, um, this is when you would use it. It's also a wild carrot, and this is when you would use it for um, a wild edible. Um, this is the only time that the little carrot is going to be edible. Now, if you know uh, how to tell the difference between this and poison hemlock, that's good. If you don't, go and watch the video. There is a video that I posted that tells you the difference in poison hemlock and Queen Anne's Lace. Um, it's a little bit blurry here. I don't know if you can tell, but the stem is definitely hairy. Um, remember that the queen has hairy legs. You want to make sure that anything that looks like this, um, with that lacy appearance, that it has hair on it and that it's not a poison hemlock. So go watch that video if you've not watched it. So, uh, you'll be safe. Of course, this is a Queen Anne's Lace wild carrot, um, full grown. So you can see the flower and the the bracts underneath it and the hair along the stem so and that is the end of the picture so um, if you have any questions or comments just put them in the comment section uh, be sure and like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and thank you all for watching and god bless bye bye